Yeah, let's see. It's 10 o'clock here, so I guess we can get a couple housekeeping notes out of the way. Hi, my name is Jim Glenn, uh, sales rep for Precision Components. I'll be moderating the meeting today. Uh, and what I'm, uh, I'm going to be watching the question and chat boxes too. So if, as we're uh, presenting here, as Kevin's presenting, mm -hmm. please feel free to type in a question. I'll monitor it. And if it's a question that needs answered right away, I'll, I'll break in. Otherwise, we'll try to hold it to the end of the presentation. Um, in the chat, same way, one of the chat or the questions, uh, I'll monitor both of them. Off to my, off to my right or left here is uh, Kevin, a like, yeah, salesperson for Precision Components. And the other way uh, is Scott Glenn, my brother, my partner, uh, who covers the West Coast for Precision Components. So we'll be moderating and hosting today, and Kevin will do the presentation. Um, I don't think we'll have any stops. There's not going to be any polls or uh, engagement things here today. Uh, don't, and if you guys need a, or would like some of our brochures that specify the product or something like that, just note me in the, you know, the questions or chat, and I'll, I'll send it to your email uh, after we're through here. I think where the meeting will be recorded, so we'll put that out to the attendees and. Uh, uh, if you want to review it or something like that, it'll be, you know, video form here. It says we get going. should take about half hour to 40 minutes, something like that, depending on how many questions and stuff we get going through there. We might even get done a little earlier than that. Depends on how fast Kevin talks today. Um, so I guess with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. Well, awesome. Appreciate it, Jim. Scott, um, yeah, just like you said, we're, we're uh, it's really just going to be some uh, overview of what Precision does. Um, a lot of stuff you're going to see, uh, you may be familiar with, probably most of you, if you've been in the industry for any length of time, you're probably familiar with some of the products I'm going to show. Uh, and I'm just demonstrating a lot of that just to show you what we're capable of. Uh, it's not, again, it's not anything crazy or, or, or wild or new uh, to a lot of you guys. Um, but uh, uh, we'll explain more of why, uh, where Precision Components adds value to our market and our niche and and uh, really how we, um, we market ourselves uh, in the industry and what makes us unique. And, and so I just want to give you a little bit of overview. First, mine again, uh, Jim, Jim introduced me and just a little bit more about me uh, as I've been here, Precision, almost 10 years. Uh, and so um, I've been in this particular side of the energy oil and gas uh, uh, market for, for about that long, uh, spent a little bit of time uh, about half this amount of time in, uh, on the, the actual oil and gas side. And so I, I have a little bit of uh, history uh, with, with these products. I actually worked uh, early, you know, 20, 20 something years ago, I actually worked in chemical plants. And so I dealt with a lot of these products as well. And so uh, I say that only to say that, that I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty common stat within our office uh, here at Precision. All of our salespeople, uh, have had experience here for 10 plus years. Um, uh, some, if, even if they've only been in sales a few years, they've actually been working out in the shop. They've actually handled the parts. They know what they're looking at. They know the materials. Uh, they know how it's made, time uh, and everything. So there, there's a lot of knowledge here. Uh, and then you throw in our owners, Brent and Mike, uh, both of them have been in the industry for a long time as well. Mike, one of the owners, uh, is actually basically grew up in a machine shop uh, for his entire life. So there's a lot of knowledge here. There's a lot of resource here uh, for you guys to uh, ask questions, uh, uh, not just today, but but anytime we we uh, we uh, we are also uh, we kind of educate uh, people that call in because not everybody deals with the same things that we deal with on a daily basis. And so we're here just as a resource uh, as well, not just selling a product, but uh, also providing some value to you guys just with our experience. But uh, a little bit about Precision. We've been around uh, since 1996, so we're actually uh, this October will be our 25th uh, 25th year. Uh, we'll complete that 25th year in business, and so we've been around. Uh, started off with five machines and a couple of guys and 8,000 square feet, and today uh, we actually have uh, I don't remember the exact number, but uh, we have about 150 pieces of equipment now uh, and nearly uh, uh, 85 to 100,000. A square feet of building space. If you'll look down uh, on the slide that's up, you'll see at the bottom right there, there's three buildings, uh, excuse me, the bottom left, there's three buildings listed. And so that very first building 
uh, there on the left is where uh, is where all of our manual machines are. And so we have a mixture of manual and CNC uh, lays and mills. And so that building on the far left uh, is uh, is where all of that equipment is. Uh, that building in the middle you'll see, that's where all of the CNCs are and also our saws uh, where we cut most of the material bar uh, and pipe. And so uh, that's, uh, that's actually where Precision Components started, right there in the middle uh, first. Uh, and then they, uh, they expanded, moved over to that building to the far left. Uh, that's where offices were for a long time. And then the building on the far right is where uh, where our offices are now. It's now we're shipping, receiving, quality, uh, and a small bit of inventory that we have uh, exist in that building. So all three of those buildings are all ours today. And so uh, that's where we've expanded to. And so uh, we have a lot of capacity to do a lot of different things. Uh, and again, we're kind of set up, uh, what makes us unique is we're set up for speed. And so, uh, a lot of these products you're going to see, uh, you're like, okay, so what makes you different? Uh, this is products I can get from, you know, a, a other distributors or manufacturers. So what makes you guys unique? Well, what makes us guys uh, makes us unique is that we are set up for speed. Uh, you're going to, uh, and as, that, as I'll explain as we go, you're going to find uh, things that you're not going to find on the shelf. You're going to get to see a quote for something oddball or strange. There's a, odd material, material requirement, uh, restrictions as far as where it can be melted. And those are the things that we see on a daily basis. Uh, those are the things that we can manufacture and make and get it out in a few days. Uh, and that's really where we add value uh, to the market. But uh, we're gonna hit some topics today, uh, uh, products. I'm gonna kind of go through them. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on them. I just wanna show you the things that, some of the things that we're, we're capable of doing, uh, but really just want to uh, let you guys know uh, how we can help you guys and your business. Hey, Kev, yeah. uh, quick interjection here, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, one sure. of the things that I hear a lot is, I didn't realize how big you guys were. You know, the, uh, that it's, it's interesting, you know, those buildings and how the growth over the years has occurred. Secondly, uh, anybody that's familiar with the city of Houston, the, the location of our shop, is kind of near Hobby Airport to put a reference on where we really sit. Sure. So again, I wanted to throw that in there. So that's where we're at. Yeah, and so as we walk through this, uh, and we'll we'll bring up a list of materials here in in, in a moment, but uh, you can see all the different materials, and and that pretty much covers everything. Uh, depending on what it is, we you know we we'll, we'll go out and find it if we've never bought it before. Um, and so uh, one of the advantages for us as well, and the reason we can move so quickly and so fast is because uh, most of these materials are available here in Houston. And that's one of the strategic reasons uh, of why we're here. Uh, there's not much you can't find here locally. Uh, and there's not much that we can't get in the same day or next day. Uh, and so that helps us uh, set up our shop in a way uh, to be able to produce things uh, fairly quickly. It's not a six to eight to 10 week um, a production run. Uh, that's not what we do. Uh, we're making that one to two pieces that uh, you just can't find anywhere. And you're getting quoted that six to eight to 10 weeks uh, waiting on a, a forging shop's production run uh, to, get this, um, to get this item. And so where we come in is we can make these things uh, as we'll walk through, we can make those things in just a few days and get it out to you. And so, uh, again, uh, an access to a broad range of materials. Things we've been seeing a lot of here recently is AIS. Uh, basically, that's melt manufactured in the U.S. only, so no foreign material at all, uh, even DFAR approved material. Uh, so it has to be melted and manufactured in the U.S., and we do see quite a bit of that, and we can handle a request like that as well. And so another recurring thing you're, you're going to hear throughout the webinar is uh, uh, we're here to help you guys stop no quoting. Uh, and so uh, I'm not saying we can quote everything that you send us, 
but there might be some things that you come across that you have a hard time procuring yourself or you just don't know where to go. Uh, and we would like to help you with that. And so uh, I'll repeat that a couple times through this. Send it to us. If you're unsure, send it to us. We'll let you know. Uh, we try not to no quote uh, if possible. Uh, if we have to no quote it, if it's outside of our wheelhouse, uh, we, we at least try to point you in a direction and give you some resources so that uh, you're not just left holding a quote that you know that you can't do anything with. We, we try to point you in a direction to get you uh, to a place where you can put a number on something and get it back to your customer. And so uh, always send us anything if you were unsure if it's something that, that can be done or if you're just not familiar with it. And I'd also add that we're usually really quick on that as well. So yep. we understand that you got to get back to your customer quickly to, you know, first one back usually. It's the order. Yeah, yeah, there's a rare time that you're going to call us or email us, uh, and we're not back to you within a within a couple hours at max. Usually, uh, usually it can it's within a half an hour. Uh, personally, I try to get you know, 10 to 15 minutes uh, to get back to you, especially if it's a quick one. If it's a list, we have to we may have to spend a little bit of time on it, but uh, but for for most of the things that we see, again, it's that onesie twosie. Uh, thing you're trying to get out the door, uh, you know, in the next day or two, uh, we're going to answer those back pretty quickly. And so, yes, we do. We do answer those things uh, as, uh, as soon as they come in. And so uh, approval list, uh, as you'll see on the screen, here's just a, a, a an overview of kind of the AMLs that we exist on. Um, and so we uh, we have some uh, Notoriety out in the in the in the community of uh, the petrochem, as you can see with Valero, Conoco. Uh, not going to read through them all, but those guys uh, were on their AMLs. We're typically on their AMLs for the mis miscellaneous or non-standard products, and that's really kind of where we want to be because that's what we do well at. Uh, and so uh, we're probably not good for. Uh, a you know one inch three threaded T that you can get off the shelf that can be made in China or India uh, probably not going to be good on that you know in, in 316 but if you're needing a, a one by half uh, socket weld by thread uh, 316 AIS T then we're your guys because we can do that we can handle that uh, and we can make it in a few days it's not something you're going to have to wait. Uh, uh, for and so that is how we ended up on most of these uh, most of these lists is the, the capabilities of doing that sort of job and so uh, any questions about that uh, again oh, I, I did want to mention we are ISO certified we go through that every year and we're also PED compliant so we uh, we actually have uh, those uh, certifications uh, and we can meet that we get PED uh, material from PED certified mills and we and we can machine products as well that will fully meet PED compliance and so uh, aside from AIS and some other DFAR qualifications uh, we also meet that as well. Little side note um, I get the cover we only sell two distributors so when Correct. you guys are out there doing your quotes if you see an AML list that we're not on please let us know and, and we'll jump on working on it and getting all the information to that uh, person uh, and uh, work on answering all their questions, have a tour of the shop, whatever it takes to get them to like our product and put yeah, us on the list. Thank you. Yeah, and then there, we've run across occasions where we people ask us to quote and we're not on an AML, even though they have one and they just want to offer it uh, because we can, because we've been able to get it out fast, uh, we've actually gotten on AMLs that way. Um, just because we were able to produce, produce quickly, and it was a quality product, uh, uh, that, that that our ability to be able to be nimble and get its stuff out fast has has gotten us probably on most of these AMLs. And so we'd love the opportunity if you have an AML that we aren't on, you don't find us on there. We would love to see uh, what we could do to get to get on those. Uh, because we know getting on them will also help you guys as well to have another avenue, another uh, resource to get some of these rush and hot uh, items off of your desk and out the door. So, 
So here's what we're going to walk through. There's just a, a few things. I, again, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on them. Most of you know what these are. And so I'm not going to, uh, I don't want to patronize you at all. Uh, I do want to, I'll just walk through them and explain kind of, uh, again, where we come in uh, to those. Uh, so here we're looking at some pressure fittings. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start off. We do uh, carry some forgings and they come in a solid form, mostly 316 and 304 two inch and down, two inch threaded and down. And so that's where, uh, that's where we fit. And we bring them in solid, just like, like this. Uh, we bring them in that way, uh, because that gives us the ability to make those weird configurations or strange configurations. Uh, and so we're not locked in to the one inch threaded that's just sitting on the shelf collecting dust. Uh, we could make, we could put three different ends on this T for you. Uh, one inch, you know, one inch socket well, three inch, uh, three inch thread, and then a half inch uh, MPTF, uh, you know, thread on there. MPTF is being a little bit tire tolerance MPT thread. And so we could do that and we could whip it out for you in a couple of days if you needed it. Uh, if it's just one, we could probably whip it out in the same day. Uh, and so we find that quite often. And so we carry a lot of uh, 316, 304, uh, some 2205 uh, as well. Uh, in those. And so uh, that's a familiar, but again, they come in solid. Uh, this particular one is a socket well that we made from one of those uh, solid forgings. Uh, and that's kind of a, a finished product. This is this is normal. It's got all the same ends on it. Uh, it's hard to find uh, the weird configurations on our shelf because we make those, they're going out the door. Uh, there's no, uh, th th those don't sit around on the shelf uh, because no one's, no one's just going to buy them regularly. And so uh, another thing that we offer in this, and so say you have a weird material requirement. And so a lot of our, uh, a lot of these tees uh, are going to be DFAR. It's going to be DFAR uh, material. And so, but you may have something that has a, a weird chemical that needs to be met or a weird origin uh, that needs to be met. Uh, again, the AIS uh, uh, requirement that we're seeing quite a bit of. Uh, we can also make uh, fittings directly from a forged bar um, or uh, or round bar. And so uh, a lot of that needs to be approved by an engineer on the other end. Uh, we're always forthright about telling you guys what we're offering to make sure that you can communicate that back to, to uh, your uh your salespeople and uh, your end users so that they are aware of what they're getting. And so uh, as far as the black pattern fittings, they do look a little different. Now they look different, but they function the same and the critical dimensions are going to be the same. And so uh, a black pattern fitting, as you can see, looks a little bit different. This is also a T. Uh, and so uh, these are different sizes, but uh, you can see they're a little different. So this one has a little bit more contouring, a little more grinding. Uh, it's actually blocked out from a piece of round bar and, and made that way. And so uh, this is why on some of these weird, if it's a C276 uh, uh, T or 90 or 45 that you uh, can't find uh, either a material restriction or a strange combination of ends, uh, sometimes we would go this route uh, to, make, to make those. Uh, and again, Dimensionally, it's fine. This is a socket weld, so it would hit all the B1611 uh, requirements, the center to end dimensions that are standard uh, in the industry. It would hit all of those. It would just look a little different. And so, uh, as we're talking about pressure fittings, we we'll also see that we have butt weld fittings up as well. And uh, we can actually, we don't bend or pull from pipe, uh, but we can make some of those butt weld fittings from our forgings. Uh, or we can make them uh, block pattern like this. And so, uh, and that one on the screen is actually showing you, uh, I'm not sure if that's one we made from a forging uh, or if it's one from, made from bar, but as you can see, it's probably a two or three inch reducing down to probably a one inch. And so that's the kind of thing that we can do. We probably made that two, three, four days uh, and got it out the door. Again, we can do a pretty good range of sizes. Uh, again, some of that's going to be dependent on the size of material that we can get, round bar uh, or otherwise. We've made some pretty large, uh, we've made some pretty large fittings, 
Uh, another thing I want to throw out about the, the fittings, and so what we see quite a bit as well is uh, uh, on your elbows, we see some strange or odd uh, um, degrees. And so uh, you may see a 22 and a half degree elbow or a 53 degree elbow. We've seen a, a range of elbows. And so we can actually make those uh, as well. Most likely we'll end up making those from round bar. Uh, also, and so uh, again, we'll, we're always forthright about how we're making it. Uh, usually, if you need something like that, uh, most of the end users don't care that we're making it from bar. They will sign off on it uh, again as long as they know what they're getting. And, and like I said, we we do attempt to make sure that we always tell them. So, okay, we can we can move on. We're going to look at uh, uh, nipple swedges. Uh, there's nothing uh, super fancy here. Uh, we make all kind of uh, swedges, uh, different materials, different sizes. Uh, I've made some 10 inch swedges before. And again, we've, we've make those out of round bar, uh, but we make, we make uh, two inch down. Uh, uh, the good thing is about our swedges, they meet, all meet the uh, MSSSP 95. They've all been tested and pressure tested, burst tested uh, to meet that. And so we, uh, we do have that certification. So, uh, Again, where we're going to come in with the swedges, it's not going to be that, you know, that two by inch and a half schedule 40 thread both in uh, uh, that you that you're good taking, you know, Chinese or Indian or other material. Uh, we're going to be the ones that make those um, um, custom ends or uh, you know schedule 40 by schedule 10, or you know it needs to be double extra heavy on the small side and schedule 40 on the large side. Uh, it's those weird configurations, a uh, groove on one end and a you know, bevel on the other. Uh, so anything strange like that that you come across, those are the things. That's really where we're going to shine uh, as far as swedges and go. Uh, the same goes with nipples. You're going to find thread both end nipples on the shelf for the most part. Uh, we see a lot of thread one end or uh, groove one end and thread on one end or plain uh, by bevel. And those are the things that, you, that aren't on the shelf uh, that that regularly, uh, you know, your, 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 your nipple and swedge guys, they're making the most common things and that's what they're keeping on the shelf. And so finding those combination ends uh, can be difficult and that's where we can come in and help uh, get, get you out of a bind. Uh, strange links, uh, uncommon links, you know, it's not six inches, but somebody needs a five and seven eighths inch long or, you know, four and nine sixteenths inch long nipple, uh, we can come in and do that. Um, we also make one that's not shown here, but uh, you've probably heard of it, a hose barb or KC nipple. We can make those as well. And so uh, most of the time we can make those out of bar. I've actually made some of the larger ones. I made up to 10 inch. Um, and depending on the schedule board you need, I can, I can probably make it out of pipe. Uh, the smaller ones most of the time have to come uh, out of bar, but we can make those. And again, any material, I've made them in stainless, made them in uh, nickel alloys. And so we're able to do those uh, as well. And so uh, plugs, bushings, uh, it's kind of the same thing. It's not uh, something you can't find on the shelf. Again, if you have a weird material or a strange material requirement, uh, or you need um, a different thread on a bushing that isn't standard, of course, you're going to find NPT threads on the shelf. But what if you need an NPT thread uh, on the, uh, the large side, and then you need a BSPT or a BSPP uh, thread on the female side. We can do that and we can make it really quickly. And so we do uh, all kinds of different threads, uh, 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 EUE, and we do some of the oil fill threads. Some of you guys don't deal in uh, a lot of that uh, with the API and oil fill stuff, but we, uh, we can do that. We've made swedges uh, with um, with those EUEs or NEU uh, threads on them. And so we have the capability and, and the, uh, the gauges to do those types of threads as well. And so uh, unions, uh, again, it's not about standard stuff, but we can do the combination ends. We can do the socket wheel by thread. We can do male thread by female thread, um, uh, orifice, O-ring, butt weld, uh, lug or hammer union. Uh, if you've never seen a lug union or hammer union, it's basically the nut has these lugs on it that you can hammer. But we we can make those. 
Uh, and again, I'm not going to belabor all the materials, uh, but we can do any combination of materials, any combination of ends, um, and different threading. And so uh, we don't see a ton of uh, API in oil field and unions, but it is something that can be made. We can make it. And so flanges, we have we have several different slides on flanges. I'm kind of knock them all out in one. Uh, because everybody pretty much knows what a flange is. And so, uh, but we, we have the capabilities uh, to do that. I will say uh, we do keep stock some higher pressure forgings in 316 and 304 on the floor uh, up to a three inch 1500 pound, uh, or maybe it's three inch 2500, I'm sorry, uh, three inch 2500 pound uh, in 316, 304. Most of those come in solid. And so uh, just like this, and so you'll see it's solid, but that gives us, again, the ability to make uh, these flanges in combinations of bores, uh, even reducing. And so, uh, or we see sometimes uh, a different bolt hole configuration that people want on these ANSI flanges. They want extra holes or they want uh, a weird, strange layout of the holes where they're not all um, uniform. Uh, they just they have a different application, something that engineer came up with, and now they're they're scrambling to try and find uh, someone that can make this. And we do come in, we we make some strange uh, bolt hole or unique bolt hole patterns and uh, reducing flanges. And so we do uh, again up to a, a three inch, twenty five hundred pound on the shelf. We can actually use the same. Uh, we can use these same forgings. Uh, for some of the API flanges that you may see. Uh, and if you've seen those, you know, a three, three and an eighth or two and nine sixteenths or uh, those weird numbers like that, five, five K or, or 10 K or two K, well, we can make those. Now we don't have an API stamp, but uh, a lot of people don't care. They're looking for these in uh, stainless and, or another, you know, another material maybe. Uh, we really don't see much of it in the nickels or, or you know, Haskelloids, but uh, we do see it quite a bit in stainless 316, 304, uh, and we can we can make those as well. Uh, orifice flanges, uh, SAE flanges, uh, as you see right there in that picture, we make a ton of those uh, SAE flanges, uh, um, and we do them regularly. So those are more of a hydraulic application. You'll see those on uh, turbines and, and things like that. Some of you may may or may not deal with that. Uh, area of the industry, but uh, we we kind of dabble in a little bit of everything, and so uh, we do make quite a few SAE flanges. But JIS, DIN, uh, we can make the Japanese iron, steel, and the and the DIN uh, flanges. We can make all those. A lot of those we can make as well from the forgings. Uh, the SAE flanges will be made from from round bar. Uh, again, we we will uh, we reveal that when we're when we're offering or making an offer. On any of that, and so that covers a lot of the the flanges, AWWA, uh, all of that would fit into there as well. Uh, spec blinds, bleed rings. Most uh, everybody knows what a spec blind is, also known as a figure eight, uh, figure eight um, uh, blinds. Um, but uh, anything that can go into a line uh, to uh, either block it off or bleed it off. Um, here I have a bleed ring. This is actually an RTJ bleed ring. As you can see by the groove, but a bleed ring basically fits inside the bolt holes of the flange. So they go in between two flanges, fit inside the bolt holes. And as you see, there's a there's a side tap where they can hook up uh, either a valve or a gauge uh, to bleed off a line uh, when they need to open it up. So uh, we make a ton of these as well, bleed rings. Uh, me personally, I make a lot of bleed rings. Um, and so uh, I'm probably the guy to call for those for sure, but uh, uh, those are just a couple couple of things that we do. Again, different materials, different requirements. That's really where we're going to come in. Outlets. Uh, a lot of you probably know these. Uh, there's a lot of trade names out there, whether uh, um, weld alets or um, vessel alet, things like that. You hear a lot of, and so we actually manufacture these. Uh, you can call them whatever you want to call them when you when you uh, request them or you inquire about them. Uh, but there's butt weld, there's threaded socket weld, 
uh, elbow, lateral, and even flanged uh, that we can do. Uh, one that's not on here is nipple left. I don't have a I don't have a uh, um, picture or even a uh, sample of that, but we can do those. And if you're not familiar with that, just to just to give you a little heads up, so an outlet. Uh, this would be a threaded outlet, and so the the idea is that uh, they're needing to get branch off of this piece of pipe, and they need to do it to a different size. So typically, what you're making, well, let's just throw on here. So basically, their radius to fit on whatever pipe it needs to go on, and so it just sits on there just like that. They weld it up, uh, and basically, if you look at it, what you made is a T, and so you basically made a butt weld by threaded T. So instead of trying to make a, a crazy custom T in the field and put it in, you can throw an, uh, one of these outlets on there, threaded, socket weld, butt weld, uh, or whatever you need uh, to meet your customer's needs. Uh, we mentioned the lateral and flange, or excuse me, the lateral and elbow, uh, same deal. Uh, they, they, they come at this angle, um, and if it's a, a lateral, it's basically it's laterally sitting on a piece of pipe. Uh, this isn't made for this piece of pipe, but just to give you an idea. And so uh, it's just another way of trying to make, as you can see, this would be like a 45 degree lateral. And so we use this, uh, or it, engineers would use this to create that lateral without actually having to make a lateral. Uh, and the same with the elbow outlet. It's gonna sit on the back of the pipe. And again, you can see you're just making another T with, a, with one of the, one of the runs being a smaller size uh, or a different configuration. Just for a visual for you guys on that. Uh, another one that we make is called uh, insert branch connections. Uh, you may have heard them called sweep uh, or something like that, but uh, that's a really good example on screen. But the difference between these and a regular outlet is these sit actually inside the pipe. So the, the radius here is actually made to match the ID of the pipe that it's sitting in. And so the these wall, the wall around the edge is actually designed to match the wall of the pipe. And so uh, really they're there to for a reinforcement. It just gives you a little bit more meat, uh, a better penetration uh, uh, throughout the weld. Uh, and so it's a little bit stronger, uh, a little bit stronger uh, hold. Um, out there in the field. Uh, just another quick thing about these outlets is that they uh, they all have been tested, pressure tested, uh, have passed the uh, MSS SP97 uh, requirements. Uh, flying color, in fact, we never had one outlet fail. Uh, the pipe always burst, the outlet uh, always stayed on. And so uh, that's not super uncommon out in the field to see a pipe bust. Uh, uh, because people think the weld is the weakest point, and it's not actually the wall pipe is the weakest point. And so, uh, but yeah, we've flying colors, all of ours met. And so, uh, offer array of, again, of sizes and materials uh, for those. Uh, you may not find it on the shelf, maybe an odd, uh, uh, again, for your uh, butt weld outlets, and maybe an odd configuration uh, of what you're trying to fit it on, and that's where we come in. Studding outlets, uh, this is the picture, probably the strangest studding outlet you'll ever see. Uh, we make a ton of them. Most of them are flat back, and you'll see they usually sit on a large uh, side of a large tank or vessel, uh, or sometimes on a, bit, a large cap or, or head, as they would call it. Uh, this particular one that you're seeing in the picture is actually a studding outlet that is probably is going to be sitting on a piece of pipe that's actually smaller than the OV of the flange itself, and so that's why it has that uh, that valley in, inside of it. And uh, if you don't know what studding outlets are, they're basically, they don't have bolt holes that go all the way through. They're actually tapped holes. Uh, and usually they are, again, set, uh, set up to be welded onto the side of a tank or vessel or a cap. Uh, and they're used to connect typically like a valve or uh, you're just, you're trying to, to, to make something fit onto a, a tank or a head that normally just wouldn't, you couldn't just weld on. And so that's where a studying outlet comes in. And so if you actually ever have trouble remembering the kind of things that we do, uh, are, are always like I said, we're in the connection business. Uh, we try to get you connected from point A to point B. 
and, and, and a line or in an application. And so that's really kind of a cool way to think about it. Orifice plates, I've talked a little bit about orifice flanges, uh, but orifice plates are uh, just like you see in the picture. Uh, we usually get them in here blank so we can drill those IDs out to whatever is needed. Uh, we stock a lot in 316, 304, mainly 316 you see orifice plates in. We can get it in other material, uh, but uh, different configurations, different sizes, different material requirements. Uh, again, we don't, uh, one thing I will note, we don't, uh, we don't really employ an engineer here on site. And so we will get requests a lot of time for them requesting for us to tell them the size of the ID or the orifice that needs to be in there. Uh, but we don't, uh, again, we, without employing an engineer, that's not something we could do with integrity. And so we always ask that uh, we could either provide it blank and be drilled afterwards or you, your engineer or end user can tell you what that ID needs to be and we can make it to whatever uh, whatever your requirements are. But uh, yeah, make those. And uh, so custom, this is custom OEM and manufacturing. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to find, uh, <laughs> find one of these. I was looking for an example to show you guys, but this is really a great, a great uh, point. Uh, this one is just something that's, somebody gave us a drawing uh, and so it wasn't standard it's not standard size or uh, industry standard uh, tee or, or fitting that you are going to find on the shelf so this is another way that we can add value to you guys uh, if you've got a drawing of something that's completely beyond anything that you've seen or even know about send it on over to us because we can we can do those based on customer drawings or engineer drawings uh, and we are comfortable signing NDAs to make sure that that uh, you are protected, that we're not going to uh, go out and uh, supply these parts to anybody else. Uh, we will protect your uh, intellectual property to make sure that you guys uh, stay competitive in what you're doing and that nobody else is out there trying to make uh, your stuff. Uh, another place we sign out, China Services. And so there's a, a, a array that we can do. and uh, we here just call it labor work and so what that means is that uh, you guys as a customer can actually supply us material that you already have on the shelf and the advantage of that for you is that you have some inventory that you can you can get rid of and uh, it actually keeps things a little uh, keeps your cost down in in the end so uh, one of the big ones that we do especially in flanges is we'll do threading and what that means is somebody will send us either a regular blind, maybe a high hub blind, uh, and they want us to, to pop a hole and tap uh, in the middle of that blind. And so basically what you, in essence, are doing is making a reducing threading flange out of these. And so uh, so you could send us your six inch, 150 pound uh, 316 blind and said, I want to put a two inch tap in there. So we can drill and tap that. We can, uh, we can do it as a labor only. So we'll take your material uh, drill, tap it, and then uh, typically we would provide an MTR on something that we made. Uh, in this case, uh, we could provide you with a CFC, basically describing a, what what we did, what we received, and what we made uh, out of that material so that you have some sort of trace or record uh, of what that material was used for and what it was turned into. And so we do a lot of threading. We can also thread pipe. and uh, uh, do do special threading on pipe uh, board changing back to flanges you can send us your weld neck said you need some schedule 10 weld necks you've got a ton of schedule 40 on the shelf uh, we can do that that kind of falls into that flange modification but we can do through boring taper boring um, and uh, do all of that again with your with your material uh, other types of flange modifications that we do see on occasion uh, is it actually turning some weld necks into orifice flanges? We talked a little bit about orifice flanges earlier. We can make those from scratch, uh, but uh, depending on the size, I think six inch, 300 and up, uh, depending on the, the thickness of the, the T dimension, it has to be at least one and nine sixteenths, or excuse me, uh, one and seven sixteenths inch thick, uh, just for a quick uh, little use of knowledge there. Uh, but if you ever have questions, of course, feel free to ask, but we can turn those flanges into an orifice flange. So, uh, we can drill and tap the side taps and put the, the, the jack screw uh, tap in as well and convert your flanges sitting on the shelf into an orifice flange 
if, uh, if you're looking to get rid of some inventory and also make a sale without having to go and get something specially made uh, for you. Uh, and again, private label manufacturing, I mentioned that a little bit. Uh, when it comes to that custom uh, engineered drawing that you would supply us, uh, we can we can do that, make those things for you again. Non-disclosures are not a problem for us. Uh, we want to protect you guys uh, and your customers and make sure that they feel safe, secure about uh, the information they're providing uh, providing us. But uh, we make uh, a, an array of different of different things. And so uh, again, it's kind of hard to show some of that. Again, uh, we want to make sure we're protecting uh, protecting our people and not just displaying a, a lot of their products out here that we make, but. Uh, again, any other kind of product modification, uh, not just flanges where we can do board changes. We can do board changes on swedges, uh, on tees and 90s. Uh, another product modification that we do uh, is making those strange degrees of elbows. And so you may have a six inch schedule 40 uh, 90 on your shelf. Uh, we can actually take that and cut it into a 45 are 22 and a half, maybe get a couple of 22 and a half degree elbows out of that or another strange or unique uh, degree elbow that you may run across. And so it's a good way again of getting some material off of your shelf uh, and uh, using it and repurposing it uh, for another inquiry that you're seeing. So uh, the, those are other things like that we can do. And so uh, that pretty much covers it. Um, uh, we couldn't cover every single product that we've ever done. But this gives you a good idea. This covers a big portion of the things that you see on a daily basis uh, and just want to uh, just to show you what we're capable of. Again, it all comes down for us. It's the strange, the unique things that you can't find that you can't wait six to eight weeks for. We don't want you waiting six to eight weeks for. Uh, and that's really where, where we're positioned in the market. And it's our niche. Uh, we don't try to compete with these big forging companies. We're not trying to compete with any of those guys. Uh, we're just trying to service. Uh, the industry by turning out quality products uh, in, in, in as fast as possible. And so that's really where that's really where we shine. Uh, again, you're going to find a great customer service here because you can't do what we're doing without having amazing customer service. So all of our all of our team is responsive and quick. Uh, we try whether uh, we have difficulties or not, we try to keep you informed and abreast of what we're doing. Uh, uh, where we're at in a quote, if we're not able to get it back quickly, we do try to let you know so that you, uh, so you have something to communicate to your, um, to your customer if you're having to wait on us. But again, most everything is going to be uh, really fast. Same day quotes, um, mostly with it, most of the time that's actually within an hour or two uh, at most. Uh, there are a rare occasion where we'll take longer, but again, we will let you know. But we just want to be here to service you guys. We want to be here for a resource for you. Uh, again, if you can't figure out where to go, come to us. Uh, if you are thinking about no quoting something, come to us. Let us at least give you some insight or help point you in a direction. If it's not something we can make here, uh, at least we can point you into a direction uh, where you can get some answers and get some numbers, hopefully. Uh, we want to make you look good for your customer and your end user uh, so that they continue to come back to you because we know in the end that'll help uh, you uh, come back to us uh, if we can be a resource for you in that way. Uh, another thing I want to throw out, uh, there's a lot of uh, different different people on this webinar. Uh, another thing that we offer and I really would encourage you if you have some team members that you uh, team members that you have that are new or team members that you have that that uh, are maybe just new to your company. Uh, and you have specific things that you have questions about or specific things that you handle on a daily basis <clears throat> that you would like to, to dive into a little bit more. Uh, we actually do uh, lunch and learns for your specific uh, branch or company. And we would love to, uh, to schedule a time uh, for, for you for that. Uh, either one of these guys can help, uh, help you guys uh, get on the schedule. Uh, we can, again, set up one of these. Uh, for you specifically for your team. We'd love to <clears throat> spend a moment chatting uh, with you directly uh, in this setting. We really can't open up the mic to everyone, <clears throat> but in those lunch and learn settings, we can actually open it up. Uh, ask You guys can ask specific questions to us uh, to, um, 
to get some more deep information about the thing that you guys see that's important for you on your daily basis. And so uh, set that up. And Jim, if you want to talk, uh, give a no, little bit more information say, about that. I was just going to say, and we can also pull in the uh, specific salesperson from inside yep. into that conversation so we can get to know know each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, uh, yeah, we would love to do that. Uh, if nothing else, you get a lunch out of it. But uh, hopefully you'll get more than that. You will get uh, you'll get some 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 knowledge and some resources that you guys can use uh, to help better your team and to help better your business. And that's really what we're here for. Yeah. One of the things I'd like to say too, kind of kind of always comes to my mind is remember that we're large enough to have relationships with a lot of forging houses and a lot of bar houses, the purchasing power to have the best pricing. Uh, but we're also small enough to be nimble and get you answers, run it through our shop. We, you know, everybody knows everybody in our shop, so we can get things done quickly um, and, and efficiently. You, know, you can get large enough, but yet small enough to react. I yep. kind of throw that out there. Yeah, no, and that's exactly, I mean, I'm literally uh, just processed this, an order right before I came in here. Somebody asked me yesterday, hey, can I get this out tomorrow? You know, it was pretty simple. It's just something he couldn't find on the shelf. And so, uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, send me the order. Here's your price. This is what we can do it for. And we can get it out tomorrow. And uh, most of the time, there's no hesitation uh, on some of that. And so you'd be surprised. Uh, uh, our prices, and I'll say this, our prices are going to be higher than most on, on some of this stuff. Uh, and a lot of that is because of how fast we're doing it. Uh, some of that's how we have to make it. But uh Typically, if you're if you got a unit down and it's an emergency, they don't really care. Uh, that end user doesn't care, and so uh, uh, don't be afraid to go back with some of the prices that we throw out there, uh, and uh, just to make sure that you can satisfy a need of your customer. Uh, again, we try to we try to uh, make you guys look good, and that's really what we want to do uh, for y'all. Maybe a quick moment, throw out our on-time delivery performance. I think we have a pretty good record of that, too. That's the, the we're not going to tell you something and not do it. Right. Yeah. We are, uh, uh, I don't know the exact number uh, recently, but we're usually at 97 or 98%. Uh, always, always the rush orders take priority. And so we're, uh, if we just broke it out by our rush orders, uh, and rush for us would be within a day or two, uh, it would be we really close to 100%. Um, be really close, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, I think overall uh, we're probably at 98 or 97 percent. Uh, Those two to three week deliveries throw us slow us off, huh? Throw us off a little. Yeah, it, yeah, it's the rush deliveries that throw the other stuff off, but but uh, but that's really where we thrive. That's really where our that's really where we pour our heart into, and it's like I said earlier on. That's really how we built Precision Components. It's how we set up our shop. It's really built for that rush and that speed to be able to get things out the door quickly uh, to get to get our customers out of mind, get their end users out of mind, and, and uh, hopefully just to save the day. Perfect. Good deal. Is there any questions? I don't see any on the thing. Uh, nothing's popping in, so uh, good time to wrap up and remind everybody, I guess, sales at pc-houston.com is an overall address. K Edwards at pc-houston.com. Or again, my Jim Glenn at steelrep.com, Scott Glenn at steelrep.com. A couple emails. Uh, if you need anything, feel free to reach out to us. Again, scheduling the uh, lunch and learns or even a quick Zoom meeting to get to know each other. That's uh, with get pull the salesperson in and, and chit chat for a few minutes and uh, get to know each other. Uh, it's always good to know, know who you're dealing with and uh, face to face. And these days, face to face gets a little harder. Throwing the mask on. Thank you. Well, I appreciate appreciate y'all's time, uh, Jim and Scott. Thanks for for setting this up and and uh, being here to keep me in line. And uh, thank everybody for jumping on. And uh, hopefully, you got some value out of it. Let's see. Thank you, uh, Have a, a great day. Thank, a couple of thank you. There's a couple of questions just popped in, but there I see. Uh, no, there's not real questions. There's thanking thanking for the uh, presentation. Okay, great. Well, thank you, guys, you guys for jumping on. And, and uh, we'd love to see you again in one of those lunch and learns uh, to answer any more specific questions you may have uh, as where we can service you guys specifically. Sounds good. Take care, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you.